departments like international relations or political science? Just one from history. So many of you are what? Um, engineers? Yeah. Yeah? From positive sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, and all that? Okay. Now, how long has it been since you were in Cyprus? Four days. Four days. Four. Four days. Um, how much do you know about the Cyprus problem? Huh? Pretty much? Okay, then I, I'll go. <laughs> I'll just take questions now. Um, okay. If you ask on, an, on the average in the North Cyprus people about the Cyprus problem, I bet that majority of them, majority of them, will start talking about the Cyprus problem starting in the 60s, telling you that the problem started in 63 or something like that. Even some people would go as back to 1950s. Whereas if you cross the border to the southern part of Cyprus, which is known as by the international community as the government of the Republic of Cyprus, but in fact we know that it is de facto a Greek Cypriot, purely Greek Cypriot government, and ask the same question about the Cyprus problem, I bet that majority of them will tell you that the Cyprus problem started in 1974. That this is one day an outside power, an aggressor state, as they call it, Turkey came and took one third of the island. So we have two versions of the history. A version which starts in 1974 for the Greek Cypriots, and another version that starts much earlier for Turkish Cypriots. Dates back to 50s or 63. I usually start with a date for the Cyprus problem, a date that nobody usually starts with. 1648. Do you know what it is, 1648? My dear friend from international relations or political science, 1648? I have no idea. No idea? Say again. 1648. 1648. How many people are from Germany? Do you know a place called Westphalia? Peace of Westphalia. Peace of Westphalia. Rings a bell? Peace of Westphalia, end of the 30 years war. Remember? The Peace of Westphalia is regarded as the emergence of the first modern international system emergence of the first modern international system based on states. So the state became the most important actor in world politics, the modern state as we know. And of course, don't worry, I'm going to come back to the uh, current times from 1648 in a flash of time. 1789. Anybody from France? Huh? Revolution. The revolution, French Revolution. The state turned into what we call the nation state. So the nation state became the most important actor in world politics. Now, of course, the nation state, in a way, in a unitary state format, hmm? one nation ruling the whole territory of the state was, was the real paradigm, became the norm, right? Became the standard, all right? So nation state in the form of a unitary state became the most important actor, became the paradigm in world politics. Now zooming into a more closer time in our history, when we came to 1950s, 
right after World War II, a few years after World War II, it was a time of what we call decolonization in the world after World War II, right? Former colonies started to be dissolved and new states would be emerged from former colonies. And as you know, Cyprus was a British colony. The Ottomans took the island in 1571. They rented the island to the British in 1878 in return for um, British help to the Ottoman Empire in its war against Russia. But when the Ottoman Empire entered World War I in alliance with Germany, in a way against the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom unilaterally um, sort of took the island, conquered the island. And after the Treaty of Lausanne, 1922, modern Republic of Turkey was established out of the remnants of the Ottoman Empire, and Cyprus remained outside of <coughs> Turkey. <coughs> and then, after Lausanne, Cyprus was declared a British colony. So in 1924, Cyprus became a British colony, and it remained a British colony until 1960. Now, going back to 1950s, a time of decolonization, the Cyprus was not an exception. So what would happen to Cyprus? There are two major communities in Cyprus, as you know. Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, who never ruled themselves until 1960, right? Always, they were under the rule of a foreign power, let's say, until 1960. So the challenge was, once the British withdraw from the island, just like they are withdrawing from other colonies, who would be ruling Cyprus? That was the question. Of course, if you look at the two communities, each of them had their own, let's say, national goal. National goal for Greek Cypriots were, was what they call in their own language, enosis. Enosis in Greek means union, but union with whom? In their own mind, union with <coughs> what they regard as their motherland, Greece. So their national aspiration was to unite the whole island with what they regard as Mother Greece. Whereas as a reaction to that, the Turkish Cypriots, who didn't want to be a tiny, tiny minority in the bigger Greece, if Cyprus joins Greece, they opposed to this island. And they developed their own reaction their own national aspiration as a reaction to Enosis, which was what we call Taksim in Turkish, which means partitioning of the island. Meaning partitioning the island between Greece and Turkey, giving one part to Greece and giving the other part to Turkey. So when we, when we are in the late 50s, we witnessed these two national aspirations, which were incompatible, right? Which were clashing. But what, what can be the result of this clash in the 1950s? If you remember 1950s, what are some of the characteristics of the world in 1950s, remember? What are some of the trends after World War II? Oh, oh. Cold War, exactly. Within the Cold War, where would you situate Cyprus and the two sort of motherlands, Turkey and Greece, in the Cold War arithmetic? Well, both Turkey and Greece 
were the members, are still the members of NATO. They are the most southeast flank of NATO, and their job was to prevent Russian or the Soviet expansion to war on waters. And especially Turkey was the buffer because it, it, it had borders with Russia, well, not Russia, but Soviet Union at that time. So it would be the first line of defense in case, let's say, um, the Russians decided to invade, march towards West. So th these were important countries. And if you think about within the Cold War mentality, can the Western alliance, NATO, afford a conflict within itself by two members of NATO, Greece and Turkey? Well, the problem in Cyprus, meaning the clash between Taksim and Enosis, the incompatibility of these two national goals, had the potential to create a conflict, even an armed clash, between Greece and Turkey, the two NATO members. Was that possible? Was that tolerable during the Cold War? Of course not. So what happened? The great powers also intervened. Greece, Turkey, and United Kingdom sit down and negotiated a deal in 1959-1960. So with London and Zurich agreements, the three guarantor powers came together, Greece, Turkey, and United Kingdom, and they established with these treaties, international treaties, what is known as 